Good day, everyone. This is Tim, and I hope you're doing well. I am in the uh, Chinatown area in Singapore, and this is the marketplace over here. And it is raining a little bit, so really glad to have the Vessies on walking around. So thank you so much for joining, and really a pleasure to visit Singapore and all the hawker stands and uh, meeting all the new friends and the old as well. And uh, thank you also for all the great suggestions you've been leaving. And one of my good friends, uh, a co-worker as well, Keith, uh, was recently in Singapore and uh, I got a chance to eat with him and Gina at a wonderful lobster buffet in Toronto. But anyhow, he was in Singapore and he said there was an amazing uh, seafood buffet here. It's not very well known, not like the uh, Ritz-Carlton or the, uh, the uh, Marina Bay Sands area but uh, it is pretty superb and it's kind of like a hidden gem. So I can't wait to give it a try. Uh, I think they have, again, lots of seafood and lobster mania as well. So again, thank you so much for joining. Ooh, I detect the smell of durian, but uh, hopefully that's not gonna let us down. I uh, hope you're hungry. Uh, come on, let's grab a great buffet lobster style or lobs let's grab some great lobster buffet style. I'm still a little bit jet lag, but that's okay. Uh, come on, let's go by Subway. A ride on the subway, pretty crowded, and we are here, and that should have been a relatively quick ride, but when uh, given the chance of uh, deciding on two directions, rest assured, I'll always pick the wrong one. But uh, we're a little bit late, and I generally love to go to the uh, buffet when it is nice and pristine, but I think we're just about 20 minutes late or so. It should be okay. Uh, come on, uh, I think right up these escalators. And our buffet awaits. So this is kind of a hidden hotel. This is the Gen Hotel, or J Hotel Gen, and a little bit of a trek, but with the subway, it is so convenient. Uh, let's go inside. It's kind of nice to be inside from uh, the heat. Even though it's raining, it's pretty hot. And I think the buffet is underway. And already I can see a mountain of lobster right over there. So Sharvin, thank you so much. So this, you get 20% off. Really yeah. nice. Thank oh, you, thank, you. thank you so much. You're very kind. All right, so we are still early at the buffet and I did get a chance to peruse around and the desserts look amazing. Those Earl Grey little cakes, I'm actually tempted to start with dessert first, but I saw they have a mountain of lobster and I see someone filming all the lobster as well. These are the hot lobsters and they're pretty ginormous. And Chef on the other side over there has been grilling up a storm with all the lobster, but I had to help myself to a glass of blueberry juice because it is so wet and hot outside. And this is the bluest blueberry juice I've ever seen. Much needed. You know, it actually tastes like it looks. Can't really describe it. Not really blueberry flavor, but I'll just leave it at that. Cheers. Mm. And with that, let's start on with the buffet. All right, starting off first down there is the dessert station and the kitty corner with all the ice cream. But immediately to the left, this is where we start. This is a wonderful fruit and salad station. And I think over there is some potato salad, then some more greens for health. I think it might be nice to get some potato salad. with raisins and pumpkin seed, perfect for the fall. And then let's see, now we are ramping up because adjacent to it is a sushi station and the seafood station. And it might be nice to start out with a little bit of sushi. So right over there, some wonderful sashimi and uh, salmon in the best way, nice and fresh with some rolls, some tobiko. This is octopus. And I've heard that the way to judge a uh, sushi place is by their egg sushi, their tamago, and then, okay, this looks like a uh, soft shell crab sushi. Just one. And then this looks pretty interesting. Really not sure what that yellow stuff is on top, but I think one way to find out. And as we speak, the hardworking folks have been filling the empty gaps. This is vegetarian, a little bit of avocado, I think. But I think we need to move on some gigantic orange shrimp. 
some mussels, and a little bit of lobster. Let's go for just one between the salmon and the crab. So I'm just gonna stick to one because uh, I see all the hot lobsters over there and they do look amazing, but this is not a bad start for the first plate. So I know this is a little bit of a small start, but we are just ramping up and I couldn't help it. Uh, they have the cold sauces for the lobster, but uh, I was perusing around and I did notice a lobster bisque and I just couldn't help myself. Something nice and warm and silky for the cold lobster. And I think let's give this a try. Uh, probably the potato salad first. Mm. Nothing wrong with a potato salad. Nice dressing, a hint of dill, nice and soft. A pretty good start. And now for the test of the sushi chef, we need to try the tamago. Uh, Andre, one of my good friends, Andre, was saying uh, in Vancouver, he'd go around different Japanese restaurants. And uh, before he orders his meal, he'll order a tamago to see how it is. If the tamago is good, so is the restaurant. A little bit of soy. Mm. That is spicy, but that is user error, and my palate isn't well-trained enough to distinguish good, bad, or indifferent. All I can say is it's really tasty. Mm. Kind of curious about this orange topping here. So, a roll covered in seaweed. Underneath, I think that is some crab. A little bit of soy. Mmm. Oh. That is absolutely delicious. I'm still not exactly sure what it is, but I think this is crab roe, very fresh and lots of crab inside. Very nice. Can't wait to dig into the lobster. Okay, so the cold lobster are kind of the smaller ones. And that's okay because the uh, hot lobster are ginormous and never ending. Let's cut a little bit here with a bit of the tamale and a little bit of the seafood sauce. Mm. Wonderfully cooked, nice and fresh, a little bit chilled, not too cold, just perfect temperature and wonderful textures. Mm. Can't let the uh, lobster bit go to waste. Hopefully this all comes out in one go. And it does a dunk. Mm. Lobster bisque is really good. So is a lobster. Rich and silky smooth. Lots of lobsters and uh, a deep lobster cognac flavor. Mm. Very nice. So there's so much more lobsters over there and the next section is the lobster mania section. So I'm gonna finish this up and uh, we'll take it back for some lobster and more lobster and then more lobster. I still don't know about the drink. First round was a quick one. The salmon sashimi, nice and fresh and a perfect temperature, a little bit chilled. And I must say, if you're here and you're going for the sushi section, go for the uh, soft shell crab roll. Really nice. Thin layer of rice, nice and crispy, full of soft shell crab. And as it gets more busy, I think we better hit the lobster mania station. This is incredible. Let's take a look. All right, so this looks pretty amazing. The squared circle full of lobster, starting off with posh number one. This is the Cam Hong lobster, and my apologies if I'm not saying that correctly. But uh, let's go for one of these. Wonderful, looks like a spicy chili flavor right over here. And you know it's spicy when they have a fiery red sign right in front of you. All right, and moving along, this is lobster in black pepper sauce and looks pretty amazing. And if you need a reminder that it is black pepper, behind there you will see the largest pepper mill in the world, or at least in the restaurant here. Just grab one here, a little bit of sauce, 
Okay. Gently. All right, and moving on, we have another round of lobsters. Lobster in Kirkuk sauce. I think this is laksa sauce. Okay. Look at this. There is really not enough room on the plate for all the lobsters. All right, how about right here? But we definitely need more sauce drenched in the laksa. Uh, this is a Norwegian lobster and the famous iconic Singapore dish, chili crab sauce. And this is instead of chili crab, you have lobster and Norwegian lobsters are uh, on a diet here, about right up here. And I noticed with uh, the chili crab, they always have some deep fried buns or mantau. So I think that is to soak up the sauce. And let's just go for one. Nice and golden brown. And then let's see what else we have. A little bit of ooh, lobster pasta. All right, and let's see what's under this lobster cloche. Uh, lobster thermidor. See, oh, and chunks of lobster, rich buttery cream. This might be a mistake because it's pretty filling. And finally, we have a bit of respite from the lobster. This is the uh, only veggie here. And uh, I think I'll definitely go for some just to break up the monotony. Hopefully I can pick this up with a spoon right next to the thermidor. All right, and next to it, let's see. I've been here before, this is the bisque. And then these are the soups, uh, sweet corn chicken and uh, porridge condiments here. And when you see the porridge condiments, I guess there's porridge in the form of lobster. I think I do need to try a little bit, not too much. I think that will, I think that is all I'll need. A little bit of scallions, a little bit of shallots for the crunch and a little bit of toasted sesame oil or a lot. And finally, circling back, I think this is the last cloche. Okay, this is fried rice with lobster as well. Always going with the lobster theme and with all the great sauces, I think we need a little bit of rice as a canvas to show off all the wonderful flavors of the deep, delicious Malaysian and Indonesian and Singaporean sauces and that is actually a little bit more rice than i'm used to but that's okay that was pretty much lobster galore and uh, never had so many different types of lobsters i never had norwegian lobster and i want to give that a try there's so many lobster here it's kind of hard to figure out which to try and uh, thank goodness a little bit of rice to soak up that wonderful sauce but i think let's try that little norwegian lobster and uh, i think let's see maybe a fork and this is gonna be messy and i think this is the norwegian laksa lobster or the norwegian singapore chili crab lobster sauce all right and it just peels out and i'm mixing the flavors let's give this a try Mm. The Norwegian lobster is much more meaty and dense than the Atlantic and the Caribbean counterpart. I guess it's because it's so cold, they uh, tend to contract a little bit more. But that Singapore chili sauce, nice and tangy and eggy. Mm. Very good flavors, but unfortunately, I don't think Norwegian lobster is my favorite. And I think. We need to try a little bit of the mantau with a solid crunch. I think I'm gonna rip a little bit of this and dip this into the Singapore chili sauce. Oh. Definitely go for the crunchy bun with the Singapore chili sauce. The inside is nice and fluffy and uh, the sauce is nice and tangy and a little bit of crisp, a perfect match. Mm. Very nice. And I think I'm gonna go for a little bit more here. And I know I shouldn't eat up on the bread, but let's try the laksa sauce. Oh. Mm. The laksa sauce is great. Very deep and rich, wonderful curry and herbaceous flavors. Mm. 
but definitely need the tang from the Singapore chili sauce. And since I've dug into that lobster, we need to complete the task. And this is not the Norwegian lobster. I think this is uh, a standard Atlantic or warm water lobster. I'm trying to get a lot of the lobster in one chunk. There we go. Mm. Very nice. And I think the laksa sauce doesn't go well with a bun. I think we can try it with a little bit of the fried rice. I'm just gonna pull the tail out. Okay, a little bit of the lobster. There we go. With a little bit of the laksa sauce. <laughs> Much better. Fried bun, fried mantau with the Singapore chili sauce and the laksa sauce with the fried rice. And next to the fried rice, we've got the lobster thermidor, nice and creamy, and a wonderful bit of spinach to cut the richness and for health. And a bit of rice. Oh. Get the lobster thermidor with the spinach for some freshness and that wonderful rice. I think this is one of the best bites here because the lobster is all the shell for you and that wonderful creamy goodness. Cheers. Mm. I think it's time for a little bit change of pace and it's kind of nice that they can mix it up with a little bit of porridge with chunks of lobster. Mm. Very nice and a nice contrast to all this richness. So I'm going to finish this up here with the spicy crab and the black pepper crab and all this wonderful carby goodness. And we'll take it back because there is still more with the grill station and more hot food and a big fish. And I'm just mixing it up with a peach tea that has the appropriate color and wonderful aromas of peach. Cheers. Mm. Much better. The lobster round was absolutely fantastic and quite doable. Very delicious. And although it looked like a lot uh, because of all the shells and everything, the meat is actually only a small proportion. So you can eat lots and lots and lots. The dry chili lobster, really aromatic. A punch of curry leaf, very fragrant, but a little bit dry. So moving on to the black pepper crab, very saucy, very good. And with all that lobster, it does get a bit monotonous. So a little bit of congee or rice porridge really certainly hit the spot. So with that, I think there is still a hot food station and the second part of Buffet Arena down there. So let's pay them a visit. Okay, so this area is a little bit more manageable because round three starting to get a little bit full, but it's not too bad. And we still have a lot of variety, starting with uh, some vegetables. And a few people have mentioned not to skip the veggies. So I think I will go for some colorful confetti of squash and roots and florets. There we go. And mashed potatoes. And the only way mashed potatoes can be better if it is gratin with truffles. There we go. And typically when we have the potatoes, we will have the roasts. So this is Angus prime rib. And I think in Asia, they do it a little bit differently. This is braised, but oh, so tender. A little bit different, but that's okay. Really fun to try new dishes. And oh, look at this. This is a salmon that is now, but just a few minutes ago, it wasn't like this. It was whole. I think I'm going to give that a skip. And uh, Alvin was saying that the uh, Indian section is superb because they have chef directly from India cooking all the wonderful dishes. And I think we will need to pay this a visit down the stairs. And starting off, let's go with some papadoms. And oh, this is kind of nice. You get a little sock and uh, jeera rice and nice and fluffy. And I think I'm gonna try a little bit. Oh, it's like a confetti of clouds. 
And my apologies, I don't really know what I'm saying. But I hope you get the point. And moving on, ooh, fish curry. Uh, with some aubergines and eggplant. And a wonderful fish. Not too much because we need room for the sauce. Uh, and Chef has taken a break, but that's okay because he has left us with these large lobsters. And I think we will go for one right next to the fish curry and another one for symmetry. A little bit of sambal in the middle. Okay, and this one I have no idea. If you know, please let me know Cody Varuval. And apologies for the pronunciation. And let's see. Beautiful fried goodness. Okay, a little bit of dal. And over here, we have some laksa, but laksa doesn't wait for you, you wait for it. So I'm gonna come back for that. And I think to finish off the plate, another papadom, but these are spiced with a confetti of spices. And this is the plate for round three. This one, I think I might have overdid it because looking at the table, it's actually quite substantial. So let's give the papadom a try. Mm. Very delicious, but a little bit dangerous because it is a filler. And I think I'm just going to rearrange the uh, items on the plate around a little bit. Get the lobsters here out of the way. And this is the Norwegian lobster again, but these ones look better. And uh, they are in a butter tarragon sauce. But I can't wait to dig in to the potatoes here with a little bit of the sambal and the uh, roast uh, prime rib sauce. Mm, wow. The potatoes are nice and creamy and you can taste the truffles. Maybe a little bit under seasoned, but that's okay. With a tangy sauce from the prime rib, almost like a stew. This is wonderful. Mm. And a little bit of gratin certainly helps as well. Let's cut into the meat. Oh. And uh, the prime rib is uh, stewed to perfection. This is well done, but so tender. You don't even have to chew. It's so tender with some fat on the top and some fat on the bottom or the other way around. Perfectly done. Mm. So good. I know this isn't the North American style of the carvery with the prime rib, but just as good. And I think even better is the fish stew with a lot of sauce and a little bit of that wonderful confetti cloud-like rice. Mm. Very good. And of course, a little bit of veggies. Mm. Let's try the lobster. And I think I have like one and a half sets of cutlery. Because uh, they put me in a larger table and I've been uh, borrowing cutlery from different place settings. And you can tell this is freshly grilled. It just comes off so easily. Mm. If you're coming here, and this is J65 Cafe, start with the grilled lobster first. That is absolutely succulent and perfectly cooked. And I think as nice as the tarragon butter is, a little lobster bisque for an extra tasty lobster. Mm. So again, I'll finish this off. I wanted to really try the laksa and the dessert, so I better finish this off before uh, uh, this buffet comes to an end, but uh, I think we still have some time. And this is a calamansi drink, the appropriate color and the wonderful aroma. And uh, I'm gonna finish this off and take you back. Cheers.
that was a very pleasant round. And uh, I think I'm gonna go for dessert and then a bowl of laksa or the reverse order. And uh, as our friend is cleaning the dishes, I'm gonna head over to the dessert station. Let's go. All right, I did say that while it looked like a lot, it was actually quite manageable because uh, the shells are quite big, but I'm taking it back because I'm starting to feel it. But look at this. That is a wonderful chocolate fountain. But as good as it is, let me show you this. Under this section, the dessert section, down here under glass, they have some vile, disgusting concoction that only some will love, but others may not and it's right in there and i'm so glad they keep the durian under glass where it belongs and let's see what's in here ah if you can see those are cantaloupes and those are pineapple but since they're in the same space and they're contaminated with the uh, oniony flavors of the durian i think i'm going to give that a skip and let's see what we have here oh this is interesting this is a throwback to the 70s or 60s, a fruit jelly mold, but I think maybe a little bit of cheesecake. I hope this is mango and one way to find out. And let's see, oh wow, the wonderful brownies, the pies, and that is something I wanted to try. This is the Earl Grey mousse cake. You can have your tea and dessert all in one go maybe two lumps. And uh, the apple crumble tart looks pretty good. Uh, some profiteroles. This one is kind of foreign to me, but uh, it's always nice to give new things a try. I think this is glutinous rice in the colors of a neon Christmas. And some more, I think this is brown sugar. And yet some more, I think this is a coconut jelly. Oh, and I think this is a matcha mousse cake, but they don't feel like matcha mousse cake. These are assorted Hmm, Nyonya Kue. So a set of four. And then let's see, some Kue Lapis. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. A multi-layer cake. Right over here. Uh, and let's see, I think this is an Asian dessert. Uh, and this is a green pea soup. And a lot of Asian desserts certainly use beans, red beans, green beans, and make a sweet porridge out of it. And let's see what we have here. To round it off, I think we have some ice cream. All right, so let's see. We have some coconut, some strawberry, and let's see what's on the other side. All right, I think this is more of the same, but I think a wonderful coconut would be fantastic right here. And that was just a bit of a proactive move to get the desserts, but I think I'm going to go for some laksa. Can I go for a laksa? Oh, thank you. Let's see, a little bit of sambal. Or a lot. Okay, so I thought I was pretty smart getting the laksa last so I can have it fresh, but I forgot I had the ice cream as well. So it's gonna be a little bit of a race for time, but I definitely want to try the laksa. Okay, I think this is a little bit of a fish cake with the egg that's all mixed up. A little bit or a lot of sambal. Let's give this a try. The broth. Oh, that is so rich. Mmm. And delicious. Make sure when you come go for the laksa. And the soup is perfectly seasoned. A little bit of smoky flavor. Very rich and creamy. And uh, depth of flavor from the chilies. And the noodles, well, you just got to slurp. Mmm. Very good. And I'm so glad I'm not wearing a white shirt. I was, uh, met a good friend, Daniel, at Glutton's by the Bay, and that's a hawker stall. He told me an interesting story. He was here for business, and uh, same as Nico, and uh, wearing white shirts 
to a client lunch with sambal and all that rich spicy stuff wasn't uh, the best move he mentioned. But I think I'm gonna finish this a little bit later. I think it's almost done. And let's go for the desserts. So I think we will unravel the ice cream first. Uh, a wonderful coconut ice cream. And this is nice because I think it has just softened wonderfully, still frozen. Mm. A wonderful, refreshing start. And let's try this Indonesian dessert. I think this is called Q Lapis, meaning layers of rice flour and pudding. Let's give that a try. Let's cut that in. Look at the lamination, or I think layers, which is what lapis means. And this spoon is not gonna cut it. Maybe it will. There we go, lots of layers. Hmm. Very nice, wonderful layers just melts in the mouth. And I think a little bit of ice cream will make it even better. Hmm. Literally goodness. And let's try the Earl Grey cake. Oh, wonderfully small and wonderfully layered. Oh, that Earl Grey cake is absolutely wonderful. Definitely go for one of this. And the lapis, the Earl Grey mousse, nice and light and a wonderful aroma of bergamot and the layered cake is nice and soft. Mm. And with the Earl Grey, I think, We'll need a cup of coffee. Oh, really needed. And finally, I think we should go for the selection of Singaporean desserts. I think this is kue, and I don't think I can pronounce the uh, first word here, uh, but I'll put it on the screen below. Let's give this a try. And it can get messy, and I think this is pandan and uh, the pink i'm not sure and the middle maybe some caramelized sugar and looking really good mm. it is dense but soft at the same time and somewhat light really wonderful flavors of the pandan and the coconut milk steamed nice and soft mm. Very nice. So I still have the dessert and the laksa to finish off, so I'll work on that. A wonderful spread here. This is like lobster mania. And uh, thank you so much for joining. Which lobster is your favorite? There's actually quite a few. But again, thank you so much for joining. And until we see each other again, I hope you're keeping well. I hope you're eating well and traveling well. And with that, a little bit of coffee would hit the spot. Mm. So. Wishing you and yours all the best and God bless. Here's to you.